Well, let's let's talk about the other guy who throws laser beams, not particularly accurate at short range. Anthony Richardson. Dane, I, I, I admit I, I made an audible gasp <laughs> the first time I opened this this mock draft and saw you had the Lions taking Anthony Richardson at 15. And I understand the reasoning. Yeah. They have got Jared Goff. He's doing very well. You can redshirt him behind Jared Goff. So, sort of like the Chiefs did with Mahomes and Alex Smith. I, I get all that. I just I live in Gainesville, Florida. I've known about Anthony Richardson since he was in high school. Like I don't see it. I, I see the traits for sure. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it all being put together on a football field against the best defensive players and the best defensive minds. Have you ever heard of a guy named Josh Allen? Yeah. <laughs> see how easy that Wait, is? Tell, tell me about this, this Josh Allen character. <laughs> okay. Can I give you my Josh Allen theory? I think I yeah, probably sure. told Dane this. So I did a huge story on Josh Allen for Sports Illustrated before his senior season at Wyoming. I guess it was redshirt junior season, whatever his last season in Wyoming was. And I talked to his parents, every coach who ever coached him growing up. And I keep going back to this photo his dad sent me of Josh as a junior in high school being like, I think he was at the time he was like six foot or six one and weighed like 175. He was, he was rail thin. And Josh was a very late physical developer. He was still growing in college. Like he got, it, he went into JUCO at like 6'2", and he wow, he came out at 6'5". Wow. So could it be that Josh developed as an NFL player because he was a late bloomer physically and reached physical maturation later than most people do? Whereas most of these guys are physically mature by the time they get to the NFL and it's kind of set in stone at that point. Could be, you know, growing into your body. I see <clears throat> one of the things I've noticed, especially his, jo Josh Allen's nickname, by the way, in high school, his high school baseball coach called him Tortuga. Because he's so turtle. Slow. Yeah. Yes. Jeez. So I, uh, I do think there could be something to that. I see this with players need to grow. We sit in basketball a lot. Uh, we see it sometimes in football with defensive linemen too. You got to grow into your body. You know, it's the old giraffe trying to baby mm -hmm. giraffe trying to take steps. Um, I think with Josh, my, my thing that I come back to is that when I look back and say, why did I miss on him? <clears throat> well, it's because I didn't put enough credence into the bad receivers not being able to get yes. open. And some of that was with Oregon too, uh, with, with Justin Herbert. But the other thing was, and I did point this out, he was, he didn't throw with timing. So he was late on anticipatory throws. And so when you're late on anticipatory throws, you're already going to allow defenses to start crowding your receivers, even with separation. When your guys aren't getting any separation at all, you're basically going to have a ton of contested throws. And I think that was a big part of, you know, when you have um, Cole Beasley underneath, you know, at, at times, not, you know, now it's McKenzie. No, it's not and an Beasley. accident when, when Stefan Diggs showed up. Yeah. Things everything really changed. To blossom. Yeah. Everything changed. And so I don't think it made, it does make Josh Allen better. But it, 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 what it does is it diminishes some of those negative things. Like maybe he does – maybe I haven't yeah. studied him, but maybe he doesn't throw with great anticipation now, Andy. But it's a lot easier when you have a rocket arm and a guy like Stephon Diggs, right. and then you just get better. Now, I will tell Guys you get better. that Anthony, Anthony get better. Richardson's receivers at Florida were not good. Hmm. Not good at all. Ricky Pearsall, the transfer from Arizona State, was the best guy he had. Hmm. Like there's – it, you, I do wonder if you put him with Ohio State's receivers, what would that look like? You put him with our, you know average to good NFL receivers, what does that look like? But the the part I have that, that I would worry about with him is just the processing, the reading, the timing. You yeah, know, get the ball out on time, and that seemed to be a real problem in 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 that offense. I thought he was bad against. Um intermediate zone just didn't I thought the processing was a big problem too recognizing where he wanted to go with the football is something that um it's a big concern because you got to win intermediate throws in the NFL for the most part and I thought he really struggled at times against zone knowing where the zone holes were going to be and how to exploit them and, and that that's a concern because once you show a weakness like that it's like a guy who can't hit a fastball 
or can't hit a curve. That's all you're going to see. Once you get a certain, um, the book is out there on you. Yeah. Everyone will explore. See, I, I can see Richardson getting drafted wherever he gets drafted. He gets into a preseason game, you know, middle of the first quarter <clears> against <throat> backups, maybe a couple first teamers, and and the opposing team is playing completely vanilla, not showing anything, and he just lights it up. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, oh, my God, we've got the steal of the draft. And then the first week of the regular season happens, and he sees a real defense, and it's it's all downhill from there. It, he's a complete freak show. I mean, we, we've we've talked about him a lot, just the, the physical abilities, but so much of his draft grade will come uh, based off the interview process. Just mm-hmm. what does he know? What does he not know? Uh, you know, it's just it, it's hard to figure that part out, especially for those of us on the outside. So there's a lot of unknown with Anthony Richardson in terms of how he's going to be uh, perceived uh, and, and ultimately draft. I mean, Lance, if I had this is an unfair question. I'm going to ask you anyways. Uh, give me the what, what you would guess is Anthony Richardson's <laughs> draft range at this point. Like he could be as high as this pick. It could be as low as this pick. But what, what do you think the range is now? Your early guess. Um, my early guess would be without looking at the teams, just a yeah. very general number, like 10 to 40. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I Malik Willis went in the third round. Mm-hmm. So my range is going to be, you know, I, I think he's got, my grade is going to be about the same as, as that I had on Willis and, you know, Pickett and Crow were basically all three of those guys were basically about the same. The same for me. I really like Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett. There were some things that concerned me. Um, but much like Justin Herbert, I think some of the concerns I had about Pickett, he's starting to make me feel a little bit better about some of those issues. Um, with Richardson, I just think the talent is so immense that I have to say like a top 10 because Mm -hmm. I could see somebody falling in love with that. But then if you really just follow the tape, cause, cause Malik Willis had bad tape last year. It was bad tape. Yeah. He had really good talent. Richardson's just been up and down tape, but he's got tremendous physical tools. So I have to go all the way to the 40s just because I saw it happen with with Malik Willis fell there, and and he had some uh, terrific tools as well. If I had to put money on it, I think that – I think four quarterbacks go in the first round, though. Yeah. How many did you end up having in your uh, mock? Four. And with uh, Young at one, um, uh, two was Will Levis. We skipped over a five. That's why I had the Panthers trading up uh, yep. to get C.J. Stroud. And then Richardson at 15, I had the Lions moving up. And, and look, Lions fans were not happy with me. And I, I get it. Like, I tr- trust me, I totally understand. Um, but look, a, a job of a mock draft is to just lay out a scenario. And I, Brad Holmes, I don't think, is going general manager of the, of the Lions. He's not going into this draft saying, Okay, got to get ourselves a quarterback. Like, I don't think that's the number one goal here. Uh, they're fine with Jared Goff as the starter, but I also think they're realistic that he's not the long term answer. And I, I mean, if you gave him truth serum, I don't think he would say <laughs> that he feels they're going to win a Super Bowl with Jared Goff. So you're on the lookout to upgrade that position if you can. And if they have a high grade on Anthony Richardson, absolutely, I can see them. How move different? Up a few spots. But Andy, how different do you think that is from what we saw with? the Kansas City Chiefs, where Alex Smith was a nice little quarterback, just like Jared Goff. You had a good team. But I think I think drafting – Well, I, I tell you the difference. The yeah, difference I mean, they, they, they had a chance to win a great a, college quarterback. Uh, well, no, that's – I mean the scenario. Yes, Mahomes yeah, yeah, was yeah. – was, was, Well, I would push back a little bit about great college quarterback. Their defense stunk. Yes, he, but he, he was, made a he lot of very mistakes. Good. He made a lot of mistakes. He had great talent. A lot of interceptions, but, yeah. But yeah. a lot of interceptions. Um, but he plays to his ability. And, and he's a guy yeah. who clearly benefited from having better players around him. But I mean the philosophy of this, this is what I'm talking about. Forget oh, yeah. being Anthony Red Richardson. Here. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the philosophy of – I feel like Detroit is on the move. Mm-hmm. Like there's some really good things ahead. Good running back group. Good offensive line. The receivers they can still they can still upgrade a little bit, but going to be going to be an unbelievable D line with whoever they. Yeah, get. they need so. some help in the secondary, but um, you know why that pick makes some sense to me, Dane, is what you could say along the process is, man, we really got to where we like. I'm just I'm just kind of I'm going through here. Okay, well, no, man, I, we really, I understand it. You know, we it love is. Richardson, and this is a guy we think that is going to be a sustainable, a sustainable. He's going to help us sustain at the Pat Mahomes level. Now, I don't buy that. 
Mm-hmm. You don't yeah. buy that, Andy, but I could see the philosophy. But but here's here's my question. I'm going to ask if I'm if I'm their front office. We can get one more good year out of Jared Goff for sure. Like I would feel very confident in Jared Goff being able to take a step forward with that roster and maybe even put maybe put them in the play. I mean, they were so close to the playoffs this year. Put them in the playoffs next year. If that happens, can you get another year out of Jared Goff? Because if you think you can, or if you think it's even borderline, then you wait until next year's QB class. The pro- I, the, I know you don't have the Rams pick anymore at that point, but perhaps you trade with somebody who will give you next year's first rounder who you think might stink next year. And then you're into a deeper quarterback class that you might like a little bit, bit a little bit better. And I think that that very well might happen. I think there's a very good chance. I, I like I said before, I don't think Holmes is going to go into this draft saying we need to get a quarterback. Like he's, yeah. they are comfortable moving forward yeah. with Goff. It's more of a strike while the iron's hot. And if a quarterback that they have ranked high were to fall to them, or at least within striking distance, I, it, it does make some sense to. I, I think a lot of Lions fans are being a little short-sighted on this because they were so close to the playoffs. And Jared Goff did play so well down the stretch that they think, oh, just upgrade our defense a little bit. It will be in the playoffs next year. I don't think it's that simple. And again, I, it, it is going good to the playoffs is a good step. But let's think further than that. And, you know, let's try to win a Super Bowl here. If uh, if you don't believe Jared Goff can help win you a Super Bowl, then, you know, what are we doing? Let's go find someone that can. Is, is and- there a guy who can win you a Super Bowl in this draft? I don't think there is. Well, and I, I, 100%, I agree with that. I, I, this is just a scenario that if the Lions had a high grade on Richardson, I don't know if they do or not. Um, I, they have seen him quite a few times this year, so they will be familiar with Andy Richardson. You know, well, I don't know if they went to the, the good games or the bad games. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, if they went to the Utah game, they're all in. Let's go. Yeah, right. So, I mean, that, there's so much of this conversation that is just is guesswork at this point. And that's why a mock draft in January, I think, is more for – laying out potential scenarios more so than anything else. And so I, in no way am I saying the Lions yeah. should or will draft a quarterback in the first round this year. But I, I do think it is fair to say if the right quarterback were to be in striking distance, I could see them making a move. 